We went through a kind of a, a difficult period um, in the mid 90s. Uh, early mid 90s. Sue Gaz recognised that uh, we needed to have uh, financial policies and, and we needed to get our finances in order because we were flying by the seat of our pants. Um, she instituted uh, a publications regime. Um, we all knuckled down and got down to producing publications that were shamelessly, shamelessly directed at HSC texts in order to generate sales, which they did, and that gradually, gradually pulled us out of the mire. And the, the other thing that was instituted at that time was um, student days. And they started off as fairly small affairs, but enabled us to, to build up some reserves. Those student days now um, help fund the professional development of teachers and keep the uh, membership subscription uh, low. And I don't think people realise um, that's what actually happens to the money. Um, and uh, we're now in a position where we've just hired a professional learning officer and that's just been uh, fantastic but the strategic planning was uh, really critical and that still goes on at the, uh, goes on for the ETA but also looking uh, for expert advice uh, because at the end of the day we're teachers uh, we're not accountants we're not marketers we're not um, all these people so you go to those people spend that money get it right and make sure they're capable and that's what we've been doing now. The ETA logo had to change. We couldn't look like, um, uh, you know, a Sayo biscuit with the bottom, well, Bill Simon used to say with the bum cut off, um, but uh, the bottom part uh, cut off to look like a map of New South Wales. Um, we went to a new look uh, for the uh, logo, so the red and black logo with that sort of media type of thing looking out. That uh, came about and the journal went to this type of thing. This was Bill Simon's uh, first um, revamp of uh, the journal and uh, we were looking for a new name and for a year Bill searched and nothing was ever good enough and uh, then at a council meeting by pure chance Grant Edwards said what about metaphor M and then in big letters ETA the ETA's position has become increasingly important um, as far as the media are concerned because we are the only group that is able to speak about um, syllabus documents in a way that is independent and the only group that um, can present directly the voice of teachers voices of teachers, I need to say. One, one of the most bizarre situations I faced, uh, I guess, was um, having been invited to speak at the uh, summer school for English teachers, which had been set up under the Liberal government by the Education Minister, Julie Bishop. I'd been invited down there to talk about English teaching in the secondary English classroom, and it was an opportunity to, to share um, you know, the sort of approaches that are quite common in, in New South Wales, which have helped, uh, which have been pioneered by um, you know, great figures in, in the history of ETA like uh, Ken Watson and Wayne Sawyer. And uh, the session that I did, um, I think, went down very well with the participants there, and they were very interested in the, in the sort of resources that Ken and Wayne and, and people associated with them have produced over the years. When I came back from that summer school, I opened up the um, national broadsheet on uh, the Saturday morning to find an opinion piece suggesting that I personally opposed the teaching of literature and thought that literature should be replaced by CD-ROMs. So when you read that, it's very hard to, to respond because there's no basis to, to those sorts of claims. So you're, you're sort of existing in this Neverland of um, assertion uh, and you're not often given a, a right of response. You were getting um, more electronic texts um, happening and with that it meant a philosophical shift to in English and um, a huge debate. Um, about the worthiness of these uh, electronic texts and um, uh, whether one should stay with the canon and so forth. 
The period of the 90s was actually quite fraught. We had a divided English teaching community. Um, there were so many different perspectives on what constituted the subject. We had um, a changeover from uh, the state Liberal government through to the ALP and uh, we were having problems in relation to HSC examinations, marking centres, um, teachers access to those marking centres and um, you know secret marker business I used to call it and uh, Basically, we were starting to see schools being named and shamed uh, in the uh, media. I, 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 I don't like to name the schools today because it could have been any school in the state. And we were talking about a roulette wheel. So um, politically, that was um, uh, an absolute nightmare. Within the ETA itself, uh, I remember at the time, just before I became secretary, the big debate was, is English political? It became political when schools were being named, when children uh, were plastered on the front of the paper. For um, the ETA, um, that period, uh, the dominant thing, and it took up most of the finances of the ETA, was to actually consult. The ETA um, came close to um, losing all, it, all its funds over it. That's how serious it was. One of the, the other exciting things uh, in recent times, if exciting is the right word, I guess is the movement to, towards a national curriculum. That, that's certainly been a, uh, an intellectual and, and often an emotional challenge as we've, we've tried to deal with um, you know, responding to that in a positive way that, that helps to, to take the discussion forward. Um, I, I've, I've greatly enjoyed the um, contact I've had with you know, teachers throughout the state around the national curriculum and that the range of perspectives that have been coming through about what English teaching uh, is all about and, and what's important to people in, in different contexts. Now, if it were true that explicit knowledge of grammar could turn you into a wonderful writer, how come the linguists aren't our great novelists? We could have started with Reflecting on the last 30 or 40 years, what would you never want to see disappear? And what would you think is so precious that it must appear in the syllabus? And what did we not know then that we know now and value? Start from that, because English teachers are so good at being reflective and for making wise choices. We really need to focus on Australian curriculum now. We still have to be, be pushing the technology side of it. Many English teachers are still afraid to be creative, innovative and encourage their students to use technology. So I see that as something that we do hand in hand with Australian curriculum. We're always looking for that fresh adventure, you know, textually speaking. Um, and I think it's a really exciting way of looking at the world. And I think ETA will move that way, we have to. We, we can't provide a service of 50 years ago. To me, the ETA has been a lifeline, a professional lifeline. I love the ETA. I think one of the proudest days of my life was when I was made a life member. It's such a beautiful organisation, I think. I've been to a couple of conferences, seen a couple of uh, activities, and I'm impressed. ETA will provides quality. You know, there is that that runs through everything we do. And I think teachers know that. People like Wayne and Mark, you know, and Prue, they're carrying on that, that legacy, I think. And I think they also respect what those of us who went before handed down.